Now, did you guys catch that Ready to Love reunion? Because, yes, it was spicy. Muy caliente, honey. Hello, and welcome to my channel, Blissfully Single Bean. I'm your homegirl, Bean, a.k.a. Beans for Easy, a.k.a. Sabine. And I'm your Blissfully Single One. Um, welcome to my review of Ready to Love, the reunion, part one. One and I have to say, I didn't think I was going to be as impressed with this reunion because I felt like I was very much underwhelmed with how the show ended. So I'm going in there thinking, all right, let me just go ahead and watch this. Let me see what's up, what's up. I did not expect for the firecrackers, for the 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 shade of it all, it was a really good for the bombshell of it all, it was a really good reunion. Part one. Child, I already can't wait until Friday night for part two. Let, let, let's get all the way into it. Before we do, though, let's have a toast. Um, I'm toasting to a change in life and the possibilities that it's going to bring. I'm toasting growth. And because I have to work at Home Depot in a few hours, you know, my part-time job, this be tequila in the cup. So let's get into the reunion. First of all, before we do all of that, let's let's let's, let's mention some of the no, some of the notable looks. Favorite look for me was Miss Adriana. Now, while I do not agree with Adriana's choice in men, obviously, that notwithstanding, mama came through. But you know what? That doesn't surprise me because when it comes for a look, when it comes to a look, Miss Adriana always delivers. I love the red dress. The red dress made her skin red lipstick miss adriana knows how to wear a red lippy oh my gosh the lips the dress the dangly earrings that look leaf like even her hairstyle it was pulled back in a nice sleek ponytail she was she was given as far as the looks joy really wasn't a fan of her dress i didn't like the bedazzle stuff but i'm pointing her out because she looks so different is it me or did joy does joy look totally different with the hairstyle change i didn't even know it was joy until she started laughing i'm like oh shit, joy there you hey rasheed rasheed looked very nice i like rasheed's suit you can tell it was tailored because it fit his body to a t love the pattern looking good boy also jay jay looked really nice i like the purple i like the black shirt i like the fact that he omitted the tie and boy oh boy jay really can wear a suit he reminds me of omari hardwick from power remember how ghost used to wear a suit it was like oh. all right so we open up and we're catching up with alicia miss alicia has some good news miss alicia is pregnant i'm like girl <laughs> wasn't the show like two days ago <laughs> now alicia did you go up on miss oprah's show with something already in that other <laughs> no y'all alicia's pregnant she has a different energy about herself a calmer energy she explains that he's a good guy he's successful i said all right go on girl you finally did find you know that sponsor for you and your kids girl i am not mad child <laughs> let me know when i where i can find one i got two children i'm raising on my own i need some help i need some help but anyway congratulations to alicia because she looked good she looked nice and at peace alex and brian hash out what went wrong and them trying to get to know each other and date and brian is going on and on about trying to make it seem like alex not opening up to him was her fault because he, he i don't even know what he was saying like <laughs> drop down in the comment box and just please explain the nonsense that brian was saying alex was just as confused as i was because alex says I don't really know what you're talking about, but me bringing up my domestic violence situation should have told you that I'm here trying to open up to you, but you didn't catch that. Instead, what you did was play all day, every day, and twice on Thursday. Alex says she understands Brian's personality, he's charming, but she sets the time and the place for everything, and Brian seemed like he was always playing, like, and that would kind of get on my damn nerves, too. I like a man that can make me laugh, but again, there's a time and place. If I'm coming to you, I'm crying over some issue that I'm dealing with. I don't want a lame-ass Pinterest joke or Pinterest quote, right, Brian? Tommy asks Alex if after the show, her and Brian talked. She said, yeah, they did talk a bit, but she heard something 
um, after she got back from the show or after the show was done rapping that leads her to believe that Ryan was lying about something. You know, Tommy wants to know what happened. What is she saying? Well, Alex says, allegedly, Brian has a baby on the way. Oh, child, Lord have mercy. <laughs> Tom says, this baby's everywhere. Baby's falling out the sky. You get a baby. You get everybody get a baby. <laughs> Tom said, oh, Lord, not another baby. <laughs> Woo. He, reunion heating up already. Brian says, well, if it's alleged and you don't know it for a fact, why would you even go on to say anything when it might be a lie? Alex says, well, sweetheart, that's what allegedly means. A mess. <laughs> then we get into the Simone, Jay, Joy, and Winter saga. And I have to give Winter, she really did hold this reunion on her back. Because a lot of the good parts of the reunion had to do with her and drama surrounding her. Girl, you did that thoroughly enjoyable, ladies and gentlemen, I must say. Anyway, they get into that. And child, when I told you the claws came out, oh, because Simone is saying, and when I say that saga, it's about the no shirt gate. When Jay walks into Winter's room to have a conversation with no shirt, then Simone ran and told that to everybody. It became a big thing because it really did hurt Winter's feelings because it made it seem like Winter was out here hoeing on these, uh, on these good people's resort. And that was not the case. Anyway, Simone says initially, I don't know why it was such a big deal, but then when they played the tape back, you know, I realized, oh, Winter did have a good reason to be upset because Joy, and Joy's looking at her like, bitch. <laughs> Simone basically blames Joy for the way things went down because of the fact that Joy talked about the situation out in open. Joy was the one that made it messy. Joy was like, I was no more messier than you doing that and trying to get in between me and Jay's situation. Simone, lawyer side, hood side, street side, eat that ass that side, came all the way to hell out. I'm like, Harper, who this woman? She was being so obnoxious <laughs> in this moment. Simone was going back and forth and there got to a point where Winter says she wasn't offended by anything that Joy did. You, on the other hand, Simone, you were the messy one. And Simone's like, listen, I don't know what conversation these sister wives were having. Sister wives, oh girl. <laughs> Joy, you have a lot more composure than I do. Because I would have got up and said, I got your sister wives, ho. I got it. Oh, but anyway, they go back and forth. And then Simone gets to a point uh, when she starts crying, child. She gets up, walks off, and then Joy says, somebody get this girl a Nazca. <laughs> I was like, zing. But Joy just says, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm just trying to lighten the mood. And then they hug and kiss and make up. Simone, I got your number. I got your number. So then we go up to David. David was the one that got kicked out because he would not immediately let Alicia know that he would support her and the eight children that she brings into the relationship. And then they replayed the way that Denise let him go. It was so cold. You know that trick told him don't trip over the step on his way out? Cold, narcissistic, just bitchy indeed. Yes, I said it. Narcissistic. David made his apologies. David said, listen, Joy, it was, you know, it was nothing personal. I do apologize. I came off some kind of way. And, you know, I'm sorry for putting my finger up in your face. Joy was like, you know what? Apology accepted. I never thought you were a bad guy. And I don't think you sticking your finger all up in my holy face is the reason why you got kicked out. You just didn't connect with anybody. And Alicia on her end says that, the way that she came at David, talking about the whole kids thing and, you know, do you, are, do you believe in paying the bills and being responsible for everything? Alicia does explain that she's one of, did she say she was one of the few or one, the only person on the resort that has children? So she says her conversations are going to be a little bit different with the guys than some of the other ladies. And actually, you know what? I did give Alicia a hard time, but I did respect that um, I did respect that explanation. She also goes on to say there was a miscommunication because when David was talking to her about the whole kids thing, he's talking about her at this, uh, he was, they were having that conversation and the way that he read it or the way that he perceived it is, all right, we're just meeting each other. Am I taking you and your kids on a vacation that I'm completely funding? And David's thing was like, okay, once we start dating, you know, for a while, and once I meet your kids, once we're in a serious relationship, then yes, of course I would step in and, and, and help with the finances with you as well as the kids. 
because it's more like a partnership once we started dating. Alicia says, that's what she meant. It didn't come out that way. So that miscommunication really fostered or really was the driving force for getting David kicked out. Like David accepts it. Um, Alicia accepts her part. David accepts his part. And Alicia drops the bomb, said, show that David done been to the house. David done been had a conversation about all this. I'm like, ah, I like it. So they're like, cool, cool. Not just cool for the TVs. Like, cool, cool with it. Loved it. Nice way to button it up, guys. Then we switch gears a little bit because, you know, Tommy knows a lot more than we know as the public, the, the, the watching public. So Tommy says, David, have you been hanging out with anybody else from the show? And David reveals that him and Alex have been kicking it. Ah, I see. I just smiled. I smiled because for me, this is the best part of Ready to Love. It's not these fake couples that eventually choose each other and break up two weeks later. It's the couples who've been eliminated who find their way kind of hanging out and growing something more. So, ah, it was a sweet moment. So Tommy said, all right, y'all been kicking it, but are you interested in her? And David's trying to play coy, like, all right, come on. Come on, Tommy. Like, hey, come on. Tommy said, no, the lady wants to know if you are interested. David says, yes, I am interested. And this is something that I should have done a while ago. And I'm doing it now. Alex, would you please go out on a date with me? I like <laughs> Such a sweet Mom, I could not stop smiling, child. <laughs> Even Brian had no choice but to smile. It was just really sweet. It was really sweet. And then you see, like, behind the scenes, you know, David's talking to Alex. So what are we going to do? This? You, you let me know when you got time and we can get it popping. <laughs> Love it. Now we see what's going on with Winter and Anthony. Winter explains, you know, it was all good just a week ago. However, they started dating shortly. And... She says they had to break, they broke up for a while. And Tommy asks why. Winter says, well, Anthony is a very passionate communicator. I'm like, oh, bitch, she be yelling at you? <laughs> Tommy said, what you mean by passionate? Anthony jumps in and Anthony says, you see, like, when I'm speaking like this, she takes it as I'm raising my voice. Winter goes, listen, your voice was a little bit higher than that. <laughs> <laughs> Leads me to believe Anthony had a little bit too much bass in his voice when he was talking to Winter. And in Winter's head, because I think Winter had issues with domestic violence as well. In Winter's head, it's taking her back to places she doesn't want to go to. This forces her to shut down. They broke up for a while, but then they reconnected at a grocery store and now they're talking to each other once again. So I'm wishing them luck, I really am. Because when Winter ended up choosing Anthony, I'm thinking it was something out of convenience, but seeing this, 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 what happened afterwards, all right, maybe I got a shot there. Let's, let's see what it do. I am wishing them the best though. So then we talk about this whole love square, the whole love square with Jay, Joy, Winter, and Edwin. And Joy explains that she was stuck between Edwin and Jay for the longest. But then she got to a point of realiza realization where she saw that Edwin was the one that like really fought for her. He was super romantic. And yes, he was. That yoga, that tantric yoga date was everything. Okay? So I can see the more romantic side. So she says Edwin was more romantic. However, Jay and her conversations hit a little bit deeper than her and Edwin's conversation. So eventually she got to a point where she chose Jay over Edwin. And I'm like, okay, thank you for explaining that. Are y'all still together? Then we go on to discuss Jay and Winter. Now listen, Miss Winter jumped in here and said, listen, I don't like the way <laughs> y'all tried to play me. Because Tommy asked her a question about Jay and that bum ass kiss that he gave her that on the cheek that that seventh grade that child that junior high ass kiss not junior high ass kiss because these kids in junior high be getting down but winter does say my feelings were very hurt about it because i'm thinking we were closer than that and she said and another thing you producers set it up like Jay did not give a damn about me. Jay, you tried to make it seem like, oh, you know, Joy was your number one when you knew you were feeling me too. And she didn't appreciate how the producers set it up so that Jay and Joy looked like Camelot, but Winter looked like a two cent side hoe. Yes, she said it. Two cents. 
Child, production must have been on her side because the production run the tunes back, DJ. All the receipts. You saw all the receipts. You saw the conversations that her and Jay would have. You saw the hangouts, the jumping into the pools. Yo, they were traipsing in between each other's room at like 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. Camera pans over to Joy and Joy's face is like... Joy wasn't amused. <laughs> so Winter's like, like, li listen, miss me with all of that. You know, I understand that he ultimately chose Joy and I'm good with it. But listen, we had a connection too. I wasn't some raggedy, you know, two cent side piece that you were just humoring. So catch that T. Winter, we caught it. Woo child. Joy talks about losing her sister and the fallout from that loss. And what struck me about this part is that Joy couldn't even talk. Like she started to talk and then she broke down and I got teary eyed because my sister and I are estranged. But if I got a phone call telling me that she was no longer here my, mentally, I'm not sure if I would be able to process that and I would never be the same person again. Like I think a little bit of light in me would, would have died because yeah, like I, I don't mess with her, but there's a lot of history back there. But at the same time, you know, a person that you've known from, from conception or consciousness, like my sister's always been there. Her and my mom have always been there and I already lost my mom. So to lose my sister, I can't even fathom the kind of hurt that Joy is going through. And you can see that hurt with her inability to talk through this segment, but they show never before seen footage. And <laughs> I'm, I'm by no means laughing at Joy and the loss of her sister. What I am laughing about is the fuckery <laughs> of what we are now going to see. We see where Tommy's relaying to the group that Joy had just lost her sister and everyone's upset. Denise is noticeably upset. And then Denise goes on to say, uh, I had a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I had a conversation with Joy and Joy said just she loves you all and she said Jay I've had a special relationship with you and you know the message she sent to the other guys was just keep holding on <laughs> don't let love die and while she's talking I'm like wait were Joy and Denise that close because i never remember even seeing them have a conversation while joy was on the show so i was a little bit confused then they pan over to joy watching this never before seen footage and joy's face is like the expression is was like girl what are you talking about so i'm like all right something smells a little bit funky with this whole situation but all right whatever but then Tommy asks Joy about how she felt about Jay leaving the show to be with her, and she can't even describe how amazing it felt to have that kind of support. She even says that he showed up to the funeral. It's either the funeral or the service. Joy, she's besides herself. She said he didn't have to do that, but the fact that he did that just meant so much. Winter jumps in and says, listen, Joy, we kind of got close throughout this taping, and... I, I'm sad that I couldn't give you what you need, but please know that you were, you know, in my heart. Then Miss Denise jumps in and says, yes, Joy, we love you. And when you hurt, I hurt. Now you see, just watching this back in hindsight, like Denise, why did you have, even have to say anything? Because as soon as Denise finished her damn sentence, Joy said, I appreciate the support, Denise, but that message you sent to the group, I didn't say that. <laughs> this is Rashid's face. <laughs> People were like, what? Denise says, well, I wanted to be a voice through, I wanted to be your voice to the rest of the cast through this experience. And then Jay said, she didn't ask you to do that. If she wanted you to do that, she would have asked you to do that. Joy said, listen, I was grieving my sister. You really think I had the time or the wherewithal to be sending long ass messages? I'm just trying to keep it together mentally to bury my sister and comes to terms with the fact that she's transitioned. By this time, everybody's looking at Denise like, oh girl, you's a psychotic. 
Now Denise is at the hot seat and she looked like child, you know, you know, you know, you don't know, fucked up. Tommy kinds of buttons up the conversation for now and says, Denise, I know you didn't mean anything bad by what you did, but it was inappropriate. And I said, Ooh, that has got to sting. Oh, by the way, the brown hair on Denise looks really good. Looks better than the black hair because it, it softens up her strong features. But still, Denise, you are a fucked up individual to use someone's grief for your gain. Like, what is wrong with you? Are you that uh, attention thirsty? Girl, you too old for, these, for, for this nonsense. And to try to profit off of Joy, Joy ain't never did anything to you. Unacceptable. So now, Tommy asks, Joy and Jay, are they together? And I'm biting my nails like, are you? Because your body language isn't saying that you're, to, you're together. And Adriana and um, Kalfani's lang body language is not saying if they're together. Winter and, Winter, we know where Winter and Anthony are at, but I doubt that the rest of these couples are together. I mean, but we'll see. But of course, Tommy ends it with a cliffhanger so we can watch part two. And I will definitely be watching part two because part one gave me everything, 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 you sure to you're my everything. What song was that? The way you look at me, I can go anywhere. Oh, Moni Slaughter. Okay. <laughs> oh Lord, it took me a minute. You know how a song pops into your head and you sing it, and then you're like, Wait a Moni, shout out to Moni Slaughter. That was a really good album. That was from her last album. Anyway, so episode wraps, but then we 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 see the fallout. You see people talking about what Denise did and Chris goes that was wild Alex says did she really just make that up really listen Calfani and Adriana just called the girl a straight out narcissist and yes <laughs> I have to agree with the both of you what kind of fuckery is this but honorable mentions you Denise because you didn't say much throughout this whole reunion episode but managed to deliver the bombshell of all bombshells but that's it that's my review of ready to love if you like it please like comment and subscribe i appreciate all the views i appreciate all the support i appreciate all my beanie pies who reach out to me miss bloom i'm looking at you no i really do appreciate it. you always watch my videos you always comment and i really do appreciate it so that is it please check out my vlog i'm in the process of uh, relocating from New York to Atlanta and I'm documenting it so if you could check out my latest vlog I would really appreciate it just uh, looking at a couple of properties you know going to Atlanta enjoying that whole Atlanta vibe it is everything and uh, catch me next week for the ready to love reunion part two and then love and marriage Huntsville is coming back I, I, I don't care about anything else going on in the storyline I just want to see the fallout between Mel and her bald-headed ass, no good ass, you know, the husband of hers or soon to be ex-husband of hers. So please, if you want to watch Love and Marriage Huntsville, please catch your girl in the reviews. Until then, let's keep it spicy. Peace out, guys. Thanks. <laughs>